That was you. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, August 21st, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Daughter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. The Wombat is in town. What's up, everybody? Yay. And our guest today is the John Richards from over in England. Welcome Hello. to the show. Have we got to flex our muscles now? Is that the new thing? There we go. It's, it's, <laughs> Do both. Right, Bosch. Yeah. Uh, lad. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religions, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non believer in your town, well, I'm betting you're just not. In Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us, Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. And we'll tell you more about that after the mid-show break. Wombat, what's our topic today? Why you be virtue signaling God and all the fun Uh stuff that comes with that. This is a topic that I wanted to do for a while, and I'm glad we finally have the opportunity now. Uh, With Dread Pirate gone, or out for at least this week, I do want to throw up a nice little roundtable discussion called What's your life story or what you've been up to? I want to see how everyone's been up to in a, in a while back. You got 30 seconds. John Richards first, go. Well, I, I went to London. This place hey. behind me nice. on, behalf, on behalf of Atheism UK. And I spoke at an event which was called Stand with Salmon. And it was, where, it, it was where we all spoke our sympathy and solidarity with Salman Rushdie for uh, standing up for free speech and, and getting stabbed for the for the privilege of it wow wow yeah. wow wow well, good for you. very impressive uh always doing cool things going to london standing up for everybody like you have so like it's cool how the when i check back in on everybody every week it's like dread pirate what are you doing i'm slowly breaking down the the false premises of our our church state separation biases that we have in our state by like tattooing spaghetti to my head and getting a picture <laughs> of it and then john is like hey i set up 14 new channels today and this one is interviewing the president it was like oh my gosh this is cool and then meanwhile i'm here and i'm like well today i did cook spaghetti and i didn't use a microwave and that's that's that is my what? own <laughs> i've got a couple of other things i could report that happened last week if you like go for one more one more one more one this more okay well we also had the agm of atheism uk and the hmm. opening speech was done by professor ac grayling nice oh very, very good cool, cool. Yeah. So this weekend, I was looking forward to doing some work in my car. I took some PTO on Friday and, and did some car repair. And I had problems and I overcame them. And I have a working car now, which is not something that was the case Friday morning. And you know what? I didn't pray. I didn't ask God to help me with one bit of it. It was just one <laughs> full weekend of nothing but engineering, science and problem solving. And it felt really, really good to accomplish something entirely on my own. If that's God what, gave me that problem, I resolve them. And that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what science does. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not only that, but I reached out to my mom and she was just like, she was problem solving with me. And none, and she's very religious. She's a Jehovah Witness. But not once did she say, well, I'll pray for it. I'll think about it or anything like that. She's just like, okay, well, first of all, it's got to have a cool head, you know, take a break, get stay hydrated. It's hot outside. Like all very, yeah, all very rational things. And now she's back in her her meetings. But like, it's cool to see that even when there is an issue with her own family, she's willing to like step a, push aside the the religious spectrum yeah. and just be like, all right, so let's let's critically think about how to resolve this problem. It's like, she still got it. She still got it somewhere there. Yeah. Larry, what's up with you? Well, I uh, use my my motorcycle riding time on Saturday, uh, taking my car to the shop. So that, that wasn't that fun, but it's stuff I couldn't do. And I don't, I don't usually work on my own car, but it was like aligning the front, the front end. And I, I could rotate the tires, I guess, but I couldn't balance them. Things like that. Just sure. It's just stuff taken care of. I have been watching this series, uh, all, all only murders in the building. Uh, that's fun. They're in their second season now. Um, so that's about it. There's not. Did a you say only on. murders in the building? Yeah. What, what it is, is, is you just can't <laughs> casually say that on an well, atheist radio show. Uh, Martin Short and Steve Martin 
and uh, this lady, I can't remember her name, but the three star and a, sh and a kind of a mystery uh, series where they they live in this building in New York, and it's a huge building. It has a lot of people in it. And uh, But these people started a podcast to figure out who caused the murder, uh, who was the murderer in this particular case in the building. And uh, somebody else asked them if they'd look into another another murder, and they said, no, we only do murders in the building. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where the name came from. But anyway, okay. it's, it's pretty funny. Not bad. I, I now I get it. That's actually kind of sounds enjoyable. Send me the link to that yeah. when we're done with this, uh, guys. You know, being charismatic is something that we all love. Being funny is something that we all love. Uh, you know what else we also love? Things that are all powerful, all knowing, and wholly virtuous completely. And I always ask mm -hmm. myself, why is that the case? Why is it that these are the things that we we apply to God characters in holy books as if that's a good thing? Because if you were to ask me, a lot of that stuff isn't actually worthwhile in, in, in characteristics that I would apply to something that I would ha have as like the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. Like, is it really that important to be powerful? Is it really that important to be all knowing? And is it really that important to be completely and wholly virtuous? Larry, what do you think? Well, I, I think they're just taking the opposite to the extreme. Like, you don't want to be unknowing. You don't want to be ignorant. <clears throat> you don't want to be powerless. You know, so it's, it's these are things that you would just like to, you'd like to have some power. You'd like to be knowledgeable, you know, in a situation. And then if the, the, the best person mm -hmm. would be the most powerful, the most knowledgeable, et cetera. Oh. So I think they just... Um, you know, try to create something that would have all of those attributes, much like they created Superman back in the 50s. Yeah, but if you look at Superman, now think about this. Superman, nowadays he's being pushed more in a different direction, but Vert Superman was essentially mm -hmm. a guy who, you know, lost his planet, lost his family, found a new planet and a new family on Earth, was just raised with some good gumption and good know-how from like local folks. And while he has the ability to block bullets, the OG Superman was just a really nice guy who was willing to help out people. And when the people were like, well, we're going to shoot you. It's like, you can shoot me, but I'm still a nice person. Like fundamentally still a nice guy. Didn't become the president of Bolivia. He became just a news reporter. He's working slightly above minimum wage. Doesn't drive the best car. He doesn't date the most attractive woman. Like he he's always just a really humble, nice guy. And I feel like that's what people try to connect to. It's like he has every capability to be the world's most strongest human dictator possible or alien dictator possible. I'm sorry. Did I say, I said human and John Richards is like, excuse me. I was like, true, true, true. But he has humanity behind him. That's what I'm saying. And yep. that's, in my opinion, the appeal of Superman. The fact that he has the humanity that's holding him back from being a complete jerk. That's, that's the cool thing. The limitation there. And the fact that, you know, like he makes mistakes. Like he, he has weaknesses that we all are aware of. And he he and while he is, you know, faster than a speeding bullet, he's not as fast as the flash. While he <laughs> while he has strength, there's other characters that can punch harder than him. And while he, you know, he can jump over single buildings, like there's characters that already can fly and probably even better than him. So like it's good to see that you know we we have this we have this automatic, you know, uh transfer of uh of willingness to worship to characters who have these like three tenets. But I wonder why we give it to them. John Richards, I saw your hand up. What's up? Yeah, well, he does make a mistake, which does turn him into a complete jerk because he wears his pants on top of his trousers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his fashion sense isn't very good. And primary colors, come on, dude, what are you doing? Uh, so I'll also throw this out too. Um, I have an opinion that there's a concept that I like to call uh, machismo, right? Machismo is... The guy who is like incredibly confident and super ultra masculine, never apologizes, always is right, can do anything, including kick stands, drink all the beers, gets all the women that he wants. Like that is um, a really, you know, to some degree toxic, but also like a very stereotypical ideal that people who don't have those qualities aspire and and if anything, uh, follow in the sense of, well, if I if I if I placate myself to someone who does have that, then maybe I, through just osmosis, 
can also claim association some as well yeah. exactly it's yeah. it's cool by association or virtue by association or power by association yeah that's why even, bullies in school you know will have their followers sycophants if you yeah, will sycophants. yes mm -hmm. and it's well, always yeah go ahead john well now we're into a pronunciation contretemps because <laughs> I, I would call it machismo but if maybe <laughs> machismo is something else maybe it's a cheesier version <laughs> Well, but pants basically, in America is different than underpants, you know that. Yes. <laughs> oh, the truth, very true, very true. So basically, yeah. you got this idea that you know um, you have people in Mesopotamia who don't have a lot of things, who aren't very rich, who don't know a lot about the world, who don't have a lot of power, and so they've come up with this character God who has all the virtues and all the oh. things that they want to have. Yeah. And it's, Egypt, you know, yes, they project it on their pharaohs, or they yeah. the pharaohs claim it. Mm, John. Well, I've got a theory as to how that arose. Ooh, I'm, not, I'm not uh, an anthropologist, but I suspect, and I, I've got an anthropologist who comes into our group sometimes, but and we might meet him later on tonight, you and I, Ty, in, in Global Atheist News Review. I'm down Because for it. I think it's all a product of tribalism. I think that a tribe has to have a leader. Yep. And... and everybody is subordinate to that leader so they have to worship that leader and that leader becomes a role model everybody aspires towards copying whatever that person does or deems to be desirable mm. and so we, we've ended up with a lord culture and when you want to invent a god naturally he is that supreme lord mm. he has to be on top right yeah. unquestionable yeah. i Perfect. also feel like on top of that there's like a pack mentality behind that too right like if you have a tribe you you also have like a pack with a, a specific sort of leadership structure and uh -huh. and as you get so where everyone's at that's who everyone can congregate but at the next level you don't the lower levels don't talk to that upper level and maybe they have uh a, a particular representatives who help yes. transfer that that level yes. but for the most part each site um each striation of power yes. is yes. smaller and the access to it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and mm. that in its own right as a power to the point where i feel like at the very top of that peak is god yeah. but then one guy who says yeah he's i talk for god mm. i'm the guy that talks for god yeah and i'm the god else has to listen to me. Yeah. yeah yeah well yeah. i am um, i was very lucky in that i i chose some very good parents who weren't religious and they, <laughs> they very good for you they, they gave me everything they could, but they failed me in one respect. They weren't royal. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I see. You have to do better next time. <laughs> yes. I also want to highlight the idea that the, the pack mentality can be given to people without their consent. It could be straight up a. You will worship my God, you will join this pack, or I'll burn your village down, yeah, destroy your sure. stuff. So sure. like we're expecting 20% of your grains or whatever each year, mm. because now you're, you listen to me and I talk to God. Do you mm. understand how that works? Mm. It's like, all right, yeah. fine, whatever, whatever it takes. Like, I'm sure that proposition has been given to people in the past. But yeah. now that we have some ideas of like, why is the fact that God being, or any gods, most gods, are we'll just stick with the christian god all powerful all knowing yeah. all virtuous mm. now that we understand like the idea or the mindset of the people who would make a character like that i also and i i think we've maybe touched on the idea that maybe that's not all it's cracked up to be at least in previous episodes i did want to bring up an interesting idea in that i don't actually think god's all powerful even if you were to take the book literally as true right there's literally a lot of things that are overlooked when a god is all powerful that god can't do Right. And then also want to knock down the all knowing. I also want to knock down the all virtuous, but I don't want to be the only one talking. Maybe we can do all knowing first. Does anyone have examples of why God may not be? <laughs> oh, no. I, I know you wrote a book on it. Larry. All right, fine, Larry, you can go first. I'll do, I'll do mine second. John, get, get some time to, to think about it. There you go. Well, apparently he didn't know that a serpent was going to invade his garden. And he wasn't powerful enough to keep it from happening. Yeah. And he wasn't omniscient enough. I mean, omnipresent enough to be there when it happened. And right. He's supposed to be everywhere at once. Mm. You know, so 
just that one example it's also break it all yeah it's also the idea of like god knew we would get to this point by the and so he set up everything at the very beginning to basically lead us to this point with the goal of having people worship him mm-hmm. yet we have such little reliable information aside from that book to to support a belief in a god right and and there might be some very willing atheists who would just be like hey listen if i just had a reliable way to get to your 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 claim that you exist if you just you know had a better system or a better methodology for me to reach that conclusion i would totally believe it i think most atheists would believe in god if they just had a credible way to reach that point but if you make faith the 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 method to arrive at a conclusion when people use faith to arrive at many many conflicting and contradictory conclusions mm-hmm. you you had to have known that was the system at the very beginning like you have to god has to know how i think about things and still came up with his process and if he is truly a god who had the end goal of i want people to worship me and i want everybody to to generally be saved or or at least have the ability to what a terrible system to put it in like that's not the way you would do it if you if you knew how or if anything it'd be a really terrible way to set up uh reality um i will throw out one more too well i want to i want to come yeah because i want i want to query the use of the word all yes you've got all powerful all knowing all virtuous and i think that that's come about the idea of him being all of these attributes you know perfect in every way Mm. that's come about because previous gods had specialisms you know they were they were rain gods they were they were farm gods they looked after the cattle they looked after the the crop or they 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 cured you when you were sick they Mm. just had their own special little thing that they were good at they weren't good at everything they weren't all gods Uh, but that of course isn't a very good business model because Your, your God, whatever God you, you you support, you worship, can only supply one sort of need. So he doesn't get called into action very often. It's only when people are sick or when there's a drought or when there's... Or you're drowning. Yeah, yes, exactly. So people back in those days wanted a better... It's it's like, you know, the the early days of selling vacuum cleaners all they did was suck the dirt off your floor. But then people realized that they could make them more desirable if they could also spray paint and dry your hair. You know, so, so they, they turned them into the, the machines of all purposes. It's very true. It's same, very true. This is so the like same. My, Go ahead. Yeah, my vacuum cleaner now like rolls on tiny little wheels and like chirps at me and like like avoids, yes. you know, my socks on the floor. It's just like there's more technology in that than, you know, exactly. there is in my laptop at the moment. And I there can't imagine go. when that thing flipped. There you go. So, and now so mops my house. It's crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. If, if you've got a God that can do everything, obviously <laughs> you can sell more vacuum cleaners. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or our higher costs. Right. Yeah, Larry, is, what's up? Well, that brings its own problems with it when if a God is all powerful and things go wrong, then it brings into question whether or not he's all good. Because, right. you know, why would he right. allow you know no, no. children to get cancer or whatever? Right. Uh, no, 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 that's not God. That's Satan. And we are. <laughs> well, and, is he but he knew Satan would Satan? exist. So, yeah, like, it's this weird. Con- yeah, it's this weird conflicting thing where it's just like mm, I've both right. made paradise and a trap door in paradise right. at the same time too. Or I've made right. the poison and I made it look just like all the delicious other apples. Right. It's like there's something. You can't be both. <laughs> well, right. And, both. and back in the uh, days when there were multiple gods, they worked at cross purposes a lot of times. Right. And they would use yeah. humans, you know, as their sport. They would you know, give them certain tasks. Right. And you could explain things going bad because this god is yeah. trying to best that god. Yeah, that's right. But when you got yeah. one god who's yeah, in one charge of everything god. and he's all mm-hmm. virtuous. Yeah, why do bad things happen? It's, it's a main exactly. question yeah. in theology. That is, that is a problem because my favorite god, goddess, actually, from the days of polytheism, is Cloacina. And her job, she had one job, and that was to keep the sewers of Rome flowing. Yeah. So she only got blamed when they were blocked. <laughs> the rest right. of the time, she wasn't needed. Right. Uh, I also throw this out too. This is um this is sort of a nuanced idea. 
but the idea of God being all knowing, he can't know everything because I know what it feels like to forget a song that I used to love and, and just recognize that I'll never hear that song again. So I, when I was a kid, I had a cassette tape I, and I loved, and I used to like record songs off the radio and I had uh, this really eclectic, you know, uh, appreciation of like for, for old school jazz. And I'd, and I'd record a bunch of stuff that came on a classical public radio station. And I had some great tracks there, but there's no words on there. It's just all, you know, solos and improvisation. And when I came back and I found the cassette tape like 20 years later, I put it in my cassette tape player. I had to buy one. And all the magnetic strip on that tape is gone. Like there's just no feedback. It's all just a blank cassette tape. And I'm like, that music is gone forever. And I used to like define my like childhood based on the songs that are on there. And I don't know how to like, find that music again i just have to recognize that i now know what it's like to forget something forever and oh. god does not know what that feels like if he is all knowing <laughs> that is a thing that i know that god doesn't know what it feels like to forget something forever and just like recognize that that's that is a feeling god can't that can't know and i'm like well god then you don't know everything what's going on there larry i saw your hand what's up well you're at the age i would think that uh, those songs may have been in midi format you know just t computer tunes or no there were there were uh orchestra there were like an actual trio sometimes and it was just played over the radio yeah yeah okay we didn't yeah. call it a playlist then did we <laughs> no it was uh what do you call it mixtape that's what it used to yeah. be back in the day mm. yeah mm. i I, you know, when things like that happen, it's sad, but it's also a recognition that, hey, you know, I did something God can't do. <laughs> and I know I have a feeling of empathy that I feel like God wouldn't necessarily have either. But like yeah. when you lose someone forever or like when someone dies in your family and you lose them or and and you, they're not just moving to a different place like heaven or something like that, but like you will never see them in your life again. Oh. That's like a sadness. I feel like God doesn't know when you lose a song. That's like yeah. a, a song. Yeah. You don't know when you have a pet that dies. That's a feeling that God doesn't know because yeah. he knows only, you know, that death is a change of address, not necessarily yeah. uh, a, a permanent loss. Permanency of loss is something that I just feel well, like God doesn't know. Right. Here's, here's the thing, though. God can't be omniscient and omnipowerful at the same okay. time. Talk to me. Because, because if he knows everything, then he can't change it. Because if he did change it, he wouldn't have known it. Ooh. Yeah. But yeah, if it's he, a can, complex. he can change it, if he can alter it, the future, then obviously he's all powerful, but not omniscient, because he certainly didn't know it. Because <laughs> he didn't know he was going to change it. Mm. And and I'm going to throw this up before we go out to the break, but like why before we touch all virtuous, why is all powerful and all knowing? even extolled on such a pedestal like i'd be happy enough listen one of my favorite heroes growing up one of my favorite heroes growing up and this is this is a obscure pool pool but it was a guy whose superpower was getting tomorrow's newspaper today that was his only power like he'd wake up in the morning he'd open up his door and there'd be a newspaper from tomorrow in front of him and he has no powers he has nothing except for just being able to read it and see whose dies or what bank gets stolen and just does his best with his own human two feet and 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 goodwill and and borderline charisma to just try to stop or talk to the robber out of stealing the bank or trying to find that kid and make sure like hey don't go to the park today kid and <laughs> or doing whatever he can to make sure the bad stuff in the news doesn't happen and he gets no money for it he gets nothing for that but like it works out for him Seeing a guy struggle, like I feel like the underdog tell the Rockies, the Luke Skywalkers, maybe not Knox. Well, I guess to an extent, but like I feel like we are attracted more to underdogs, and because we can recognize the the ethos and the pathos and and the struggle of trying to do good in a world that's not necessarily in your best interest or in your in your favor. So when I, you have this, when you have this being that's all powerful and all knowing, I'm already so disinterested in this character. It's like. Yeah, this character yeah. has no weaknesses. Why do I care? Why do I care? Why would I ever worship that being? Like, it makes no yeah. sense to me. I think that's only some of us, though. Some of us relate to the underdog. But there are other people, and I'm thinking of a former president of America, sure. who do not relate to the underdog at all. Mm, why? Humans, man. Larry, what's up? No, I'm intrigued. Uh, I hadn't heard of that person with the superpower of getting a newspaper. Um, 
can you come up with the name can you remember the gary name hobson the name? from chicago express or uh gary hobson yeah i believe his name is gary hobson uh he he's not a superhero like i said he's just a regular person yeah but yeah i mean i i i it's a tv show that came on and his i let's say hob we <laughs> hey how about this we go on a break i'll look it up i'll i'll and we'll come uh, right back i looked it. it up it says gary hobson early edition Yes, <laughs> that name is tattooed There's on my brain. Article. It's another example in my head of guy who has power but doesn't use it in a bad way. Limit is limited in his capability, limited in his knowledge, and relies on other people in a great deal to help him get basically good things done. Yeah. And I feel Fantasy like that comedy is comedy drama is what it's called from 1996. Yeah, and yeah. I I just love that. But I guess you're right, John. There is a cast of people who don't want that in their in their yeah. in their heroes. They yeah. want the all powerful. They want the all knowing. They want the all virtuous. And we'll talk about why God isn't any of those things to hopefully get those people off that bandwagon in the second half. Larry, why don't we right. take us out? Sure. Stay tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. We're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be back right after this short break. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. I don't need to go anywhere or anything. Nope. So can I, can I? To. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio. 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's talk for just a moment about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year now and have over a thousand members. We have weekly in-person meetings if you'd like to join us in Knoxville's old city at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top to tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. We also have a Tuesday, that's every Tuesday evening, by the way. I didn't put the day of the week in there. Anyway, we also have a Tuesday evening Zoom ASK meeting. If you'd like to join us, like if you can't get to Knoxville or can't get out, uh, join us via Zoom. You'll need the link, though, so email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. You can find us online on Facebook meetup.com or go to the website at eighth i'm sorry knoxville atheists.org or just google knoxville atheists you can get it to us that way by the way if you don't live in knoxville you should still go to meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town mm -hmm. don't find one find Star one, one. Oh, wombat where do we want to pick up some quick little comments uh not little comments big comments that we love Dada's trader room said from our last episode mailbag when we went over a bunch of mail uh, uh comments christians mm. often use the false false christians often use false dichotomies that either the universe came from nothing or god created it the mm. question to ask them in such a case is what did god create the universe from because if matter had not preceded god then god must have created the universe from nothing yeah absolutely I, you know why i also say that there's also this idea of a false dichotomy is presented when you don't know what all your options are and so you you pigeonhole yourself as as the one that you hope is right and a bunch of other ones that you already know are wrong and you only examine the ones that you know are wrong so that by the default position the one that you're right the one that you want to win wins and i'm working on an analogy it's long i'm not going to go into too much here but essentially like if you don't know what a sock is if you have no idea what a sock is how can you be so confident? Uh, I won't even get into it. I won't even get to it. I'm going to have a much more, I'll, I'll bring it up. Okay. Larry's like, just say it. All right. All right. So basically like the idea of like, you only know, you need to have a good frame of reference. The, the problem with when someone presents a false dichotomy is that they lack a frame of reference and, and the frame of reference can be easily presented to them by just showing them like, Hey, if you don't know what something, if you think God created the universe and everything's created, can you point to something that's not a creation? Because if everything is creation and you have no idea what something that's not a creation is, then you don't know what a creation is from what something isn't a creation. So if you don't have that frame of reference, how can you claim that anything's created? 
the the premise behind the false dichotomy in this case is there's no def, def or no recognition of what something that's not a creation is. There's just a claim that everything's created. Larry, what's up? Uh, I was going to say like the uh, watchmaker argument. You know, yes. the, the the watch on the beach. You look at the watch and you say, you know, that's created. You know, so how could everything else not be created? Right. Well, then how do you tell the difference between the watch and the sand if everything's created? Right. I mean, what makes it stand out is different. Right. Um, but you you are claiming that it is different. So you are, yourself are saying that there's a difference between what's created and what's not. Right. Like if I had, I'm going to try it again. If I had a clothing drawer and I pulled out something that I claimed with a sock, but I don't know what socks look like or what they don't look like, right? Like, can uh -huh, I really be 100% uh -huh, yeah. confident that the thing that I pulled out was sock and not like other some other garment or a shirt or a pants? Mm -hmm. And I need to know what something looks like and what something doesn't look like. I need to have that frame of reference before I can claim anything. And so if I claim the whole universe is created and I'm in that universe smack dab in the middle somewhere, how can I look at something that's not created as an example so that I have a frame of reference to recognize what creations are? If I don't have that, I'm just working off the premise that I believed someone when they told me that God created everything. I don't have a way of testing right. that myself. Mm -hmm. Until then, you can't go forward with that. What's up, John Richards? Well, the thing here is that we know that the watch you find in the desert is made because we know that there's an agent behind it. We know that there are such things as watchmakers. But the rest of creation, we don't know what the agent is. There's no evidence for any agent. So that's nature doing it, not creation at all. It's a natural outcome of mm -hmm. processes. Mm. Uh, another example of that would be if you took me to an alien planet, you know, just out flung on another planet, and I saw like a spire, I couldn't tell you if that was by nature, just through the yeah. dynamics of that world's, yeah. you know, physics, or an intent by some cr culture that I don't understand. I would yeah. need to have a frame of reference of what life on that planet was capable of. And yep. what sort of weather patterns they were experiencing before I can tell you if this cylindrical rock was made yep. either by intent of people or by yep. nature. Yep. I need to have a frame of reference before I can claim anything's created. And it could it's... be an anthill, couldn't it? <laughs> it could be an anthill, right? So like yeah. the argument of the false dichotomy is not to tackle them with more challenging false dichotomies or um, how, let me see, what did... Ca what did God create the universe from? You know, you're going to go down to deeper levels of turtles at that point. Just ask them if they have a frame of reference for what a creation is. Because if once they realize that they don't, that takes away the false dichotomy completely. It works really, really easy. Speaking of which, I got another comment from Philip Ziegler, who commented on the balloon analogy, which is a street epistemology video I have way back in the day. Uh, the idea behind the balloon analogy is people hold on to their beliefs in the same way that like, people hold on to balloons there's like a little string and that string is held to the balloon which is their belief and the more you try to attack that balloon the more people pull out hold harder on that string and maybe even pull that balloon closer to them because that balloon is valuable to them it's how they think they can be a good person it's how they're judged by society it's how they make sense of the world and and how they get comfort like that balloon is them so don't tackle the balloon don't try to poke it with a like a needle and be like i'm gonna pop your balloon Instead, look at the string. Make sure that string is good because less people put a lot of attention in the string and they only care about the balloon. So if you talk about the methodology people use to arrive at their conclusions without attacking the conclusion itself, you get a lot better mileage in your discussions. So whenever I talk about things with people about their deeply held beliefs, I'm always talking about the methodology they're using to reach their beliefs, the string, mm. not the balloon. And Philip Zeger says, great way to clarify the difference between a challenging a person's belief and exploring the reliability of the reasons for their confidence that the belief is true. Instead of people getting defensive to protect themselves, they become curious about their own methodology, which in most cases they have never really examined. And if you participate as genuinely, if you, and if you participate with a genuinely curious partner, the conversations can be transformative for both people. I agree completely. Great, great comment. Great comment, yeah. Ziegler. Before, uh, uh, before yeah, we leave Paley's watchmaker analysis, uh, analogy rather, I think it's an attempt to sidestep the real question by, by putting it into a false dichotomy there. They're, they're, they're saying, I don't have to show you the agent. Right, right. But you, they're avoiding. The real question is, you know, show me the agent. 
because I can show you a watchmaker. You show me your God who does this creation stuff, and then I'll believe you. But they right. don't say that. They 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 don't. They try to divert your attention away from into the area of is this or that. Also, uh, different societies have different gods. So I mean, you have competing theories for yeah. the same creation. Yes. So I mean, why should I believe your God did it when this society said yes. their God did it? Yes. You know, yes. and and the scientists say nay, it could happen naturally. Yes, right. Indeed. This God's giving away free candy. What can your God do for me? Right? Uh, <laughs> yes. yes, quite. Yes. Uh, and, and you mentioned um, uh, what was it? Uh, everything being made from dirt was was that it? You said something about me, or yeah, or you said something about um, well, what did God make it from? There must have right. been stuff. there must have been some stuff there beforehand, and of course, that's what they argue is a weakness of the scientific explanation because they say you're claiming that everything's made from rock well right. we are not claiming that but they are they're right. claiming that adam was made from dirt yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah oh why is there still okay. dirt again yeah again listen when you talk to someone who believes very hard in star trek or star wars there's always some other when if you bring out some like why do lightsabers only stop three feet if they're light they should just keep going it's like no 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 the the crystals from the Mandalorian or it's like there's always going to be some weird more nuanced yeah. level of swamp for them to go down right. deeper why into. don't they just pass through each other instead of stopping when they hit <laughs> <laughs> again when they fight <laughs> again that's like attacking the balloon they're just going to put an extra set of hands on it to protect it you gotta attack that string if they use a false economy approach it's a frame of reference to to dismantle that because if they're curious if they're genuinely curious they will realize, oh, I don't have a frame of reference for understanding what a creation is from what it's not. And yeah, I should be able to recognize what something isn't before I claim with 100% certainty that it is. If I don't have that, what the hell, what, why do I believe that? I need to come up with a better way to reach this balloon. That at least gets them to a better methodology to reach their balloon, which I'm cool with. If they have one that works, I'll believe that too. But if they don't, at least they got rid of a bad methodology. And when you cut that string and the balloon keeps flying away, hey, that solves the problem too because you got rid of a bad conclusion. Um, Nate also oh, left the comment says, you're the dude, Dr. Wells. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you guys so much for all the comments. We go through them each week. Feel free to leave them on any of our channels. We'll go, we'll go over it. I'm here at Let's Chat. Feel free to leave some comments. Guys, we got one last one. Let's buckle up. Buckle up. It's the big one. God is all virtuous. We talked about the problem of evil a little bit earlier on in the show. We talked about the intentions of a God who would make, you know, terrible things happen. And here's my, here's my thought process. If God is all virtuous, you have the system where he waits for bad things to happen, lets them plays out, and then says, well, I will punish that guy in heaven. I'm like, you know what, though? You could have stopped un needless suffering if you just stepped in now. Like one of the things that I love to watch is um, police interviews of people who definitely did a crime and are being tricked essentially by the police officer to confess about these crimes to alarming detail. And in my head, it's just a staggeringly brilliant process of interrogation, but also like this cunning that makes this person explain step by step how they thought about this murder or this assault that they were about to do, all the things they did to prepare for it, and, and just them casually explaining to this officer of law about like all these premeditated steps that they were doing leading into this final thing. And I'm like, the police officers are doing their job. They're bringing justice to something that was out of their control, that they had no wherewithal of, that they had no way of stopping until the bad thing happened. But God knew the whole step of the way. God knew when the guy bought the ax from Amazon that he's like, oh, this guy's probably going to uh, try to kill a guy. I'm going to wait for it to happen, though, and then I'm totally going to punish this guy. And he's stabbing the person or he's like waiting for him outside of a bush. It's like God's like, oh, that guy's totally going to stab that guy with the ax and hack him into 40 pieces. But I'll let it happen because I totally am going to punish this dude. Then he does. And he's just like, oh, that's so terrible. Oh, well, I wish there was a way I could stop it. Anyway, I'll let him finish. And then after he's dead. Maybe, unless if he turns around and like uh, you know uses, uses the blood of my son that I killed on a cross to to forgive to forgive him. Larry, what's up? I'm sorry. 
No, I was just going to say that in America, we have laws against uh, knowing about a crime before the crime happens Absolutely. and and not doing anything about it, not reporting it. And you can also be an accomplice after the fact as well. Yes. But so that makes God an accomplice before and after the fact. Yeah. So he's culpable for a lot of this stuff because obviously he can act. You know, according to every believer on the planet, he can act to interfere with it, with human affairs, but he yes. doesn't. It's criminal intent. That's what it's <clears throat> right. called, at least in the United States of America. Mm-hmm. You had right. the intent to do a crime, but we stopped you from doing it. And we oh. can still punish you to a different code, but we can still punish yeah, you for even, it, maybe even give you rehab for yeah, it. We can, we can uh, punish you for knowing about the crime and not doing yeah. anything about it, mm-hmm. even if you didn't do the crime. You know, but if you knew about it beforehand, didn't notify the authorities or didn't uh, step up, um, then you can be held culpable for that. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's uh, uh, I want to throw out if God did one sting, <laughs> maybe even like one sting a year, just like it's God's sting. Like, hey, listen, I, 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 I left some gold out, but I told you not to steal. And if you if you think about stealing it, I'm going to like turn you green and just be like i'm god this guy's criminal intent to steal but you can forgive yourself i'm just letting everybody know i exist does everyone be cool this is criminal intent to sin <laughs> criminal intent to sin then everyone would be like oh god does exist that's fine that's pretty virtuous you stop the crime from actually happening instead of letting it happen completely even if it costs needless harm or the expense of a person's life or or their well-being like I can't imagine anything worse. John Richards, you want to weigh in on this? Sure, yeah. Well, I'm wondering, if his book is anything to go by, how can he be described as being all virtuous? eh? Mm -hmm. I mean, in chapter one, he drowns everyone except Noah's family. Right. Babies, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, literally, he tells people to go kill other people. Yeah. You know, how virtuous is that? To enslave people, too. Yeah. You know, the the saddest thing for me, too, is when I hear and I've had this conversation as recently as like two weeks ago, I was talking to a guy who was a Christian, wanted to ask me questions because I'm an out atheist at work. And he's just like, where do you get your morals from? And I'm just like, Larry, you would roll your eyes into the back of your head like 16 <laughs> times when you get this. And yeah. I and I and I have no problem answering that. But it's like it's sort of like a kid being like like a third grader coming to you and being like, I don't believe in blue. You're just like, oh, my God, how do I? How do I go explaining this? It's like, well, there's colors. There's, you know, and <laughs> if I bought you a box of crayons and we pulled out everything that wasn't blue, there'd be one crayon left. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Like, how can I make this more simple? Well, that's not mm-hmm. actually blue. That's just the blue that the news. So, so anyway, so I'm talking to this guy. Uh, he says, where do you get your morals from? I'm explaining him about like the concept of, of well-being and reducing needless harm and stuff like that. And so at the end of it, he's like, well, I guess that makes sense. And I ask him like, where do you get your morals from? He says, I get them from God. And like, is your opinion is God very moral? He's like, he's the most absolute moral person, person. Like that's where morals come from. I'm like, so would he ever tell you to like drown a baby? He's like, no, drowning babies is bad. And I'm like, would God ever drown a baby? He's like, no, God would never drown babies. And I'm just like, read the Bible? no, no, he's not, <laughs> not critically. And so I said, well, Noah's flood drowned like the whole world's worth of population, including babies. Like, well, they deserved it. That was the mm-hmm. switch in his head. And yes. I'm like, but that wasn't the premise of the line of questions that I led you up to. And he's like, well, I'm sure he had a reason for it. And they were acting really, really bad. I'm like, the babies were acting really bad. He's like, well, yes. and then we did the same thing with slavery because Ecclesiastes specifically tells you groups of people to enslave, how to beat them so they don't die within three days so you don't get yes. punished for it. Uh, yeah. how to take their children from them so they don't run away from you, yeah. how to own their family so that you can always own them as property and you can ransom them yeah. for additional time. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll go for it, Larry. And according to the book, uh, God's single most common interaction with humans is killing them <laughs> or or giving them plagues which kill them. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Yeah. And the the heart the the one that breaks my heart the most is when I bring up the slavery option, and they're like, "Well, that was just the accepted thing to do back in the day." And I was like, "The slaves didn't want to be slaves." <laughs> I'm pretty sure the people who wrote the Bible were like, "Yeah, we're cool with this," but the ones who were enslaved had a problem with it, and it wasn't cool with them even back then. And would you agree that they had 
a right to at least have that feeling, if anything. And yes, of course he gets it. But like the idea that you could take a, a, a well-meaning person and destroy their sense of morality and taint it so poorly by extolling like this terrible example of virtuosity in front of them, one that they don't apply any sort of critical thinking to, is tragic. If anything, yeah, yeah. In, my, in my opinion, it's child abuse. Mm -hmm. I think in the, in the most simplest form, when you raise a kid to not appreciate morality in, in the real sense, in the systematic way, and instead hold this bully, this tyrant, and say, this is the example of morality that you need to follow, and everything that this guy does is correct. That is child abuse in my head. Like, that is yeah. an affront to us, because we have to live with the, the circumstances of that. We have to live in a world where people can just be rude to each other, pray in their own private quarters, and think they're completely, you know, resolved of any issues. That's that's a terrible world to be in. John Richards. Yeah, well, as president of Atheism UK, I get invited to do interesting stuff. And one of them is to debate this very topic. The title is, Can We Be Good Without God? Hell yeah. And it's, it's to happen at the Bishop Stortford College, which is one of our near top private, uh, independent schools. And the, the, my opponent will be a bishop. So this isn't going to happen until March, unfortunately, but I can't wait. No, Not I'd bad. like to see that. So. Be well, sure to let us, let us know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another thing about uh, when Christians say that they get their morality from the Bible, I'm I usually just jump in and say, you, "So you you uh, you think that the Bible is the uh, apex of morality, and you do everything it tells you to do?" And they say, "Yeah." And I point out that you know it does tell you that, that rich witches are real, and that we need to find them and kill them, right? And that you should find and kill homosexuals as well uh do you do all that uh, no i don't then you don't get your morality from the bible you pick and choose right which right, things right. that you want to do and yeah. which things you don't want to do yeah. therefore you're getting your morality from the rest of society and right. from what you're deemed is good or bad when i hear when i hear people say i get my morality from the bible i ask them what do they mean by that and they say, mm -hmm. well, it tells me not to steal, not to, to hurt people, not to kill, not to blah, 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 blah. And I say, okay, if the Bible, just just for the fun funsies of this argument, if you found out tomorrow the Bible wasn't true, right? Would you start killing people? And they say, no. Would you start stealing right. things from them? Like, no, I wouldn't do that. Like, if you, would you start, you know, cheating on your wife? No, I wouldn't do that. I'm just like, okay, well, whether it's, from? yeah. Whether the Bible was true or whether it wasn't, you're still operating on a higher standard of morality, like this high yeah. standard of morality. So it can't be from the Bible. Yeah. What do you mean then that you got it from the Bible? What do you What do you mean by that? And let them think through that. What do you mean? What's up, Larry? No, um, <clears throat> my thought process has moved on. I'm afraid. Oh, um, go ahead. Go ahead. Thing, I'll, I'll John back. Richard, pull them out. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll fill in for you, Larry. The <laughs> thing is. On this very topic of um, stoning gay people, I think you mentioned this from the Bible, one of your candidates, a, a GOP, Grand Old Party candidate in Oklahoma, is getting attention at the moment because he's running in the Republican primary runoff. And um, he, in some years ago, it's true, but everything stays, doesn't go away on, on the internet, does it? Right. So he made some extreme comments and he was he was saying that there's a long list of people in the Bible who sinned and who are worthy of death. So he's now trying to have to row back on that <laughs> because he realizes he's not a vote winner. I remember now. <laughs> Go on, says, I, get, Good point. I get people Good point, asking Richard. me. Yeah, it was. Uh, sorry. Uh, I get people in my conversations, I get people, saying, what's stopping us from killing or raping as much as we want to? And the answer is, I do rape and kill as much as I yes. want to. Yes. I don't want to. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and, you know, we are stopping ourselves because of our mutual uh, uh, empathy and compassion with a fellow man. That's a yeah. very interesting point. I might, I might, I, I, you have this. So Larry, you might realize has a bag of cheeky comments. And if you follow his internet premise, he's just constantly dashing him out like, you know, Pokemon cards at a trading card event or something like that. But uh -huh. if someone says, why aren't you killing or raping as much as I was like, I am doing it exactly as much as I want to, which is yeah. zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why is yeah. that? And mm -hmm. listen, I and here's the other thing, too. Um, 
if if the Bible is the only thing keeping you from stealing, sexually abusing, uh, uh, murdering people, like whatever terrible thing you want to add to that, then you are welcome to keep the Bible. I mean, I wish there was a, a better, you know, I wish there was a better safeguard than a fantasy book to keep you from causing all these harmful things from happening perpetrated mm -hmm. by you. But if that's what it takes for you to be a, a working member of society, mm -hmm. fine, fine. I'm willing to take that. And I think that works for some people, but I do not think that it works for the number that it's currently indoctrinated for. And I, th I guarantee you that if we were to at least have the freedom of, of not being indoctrinated at such a young age, we would come up for better systems for mm -hmm. those people who believe in those falsehoods that keep them as as operational functioning people we would come up with better systems for them or find a safer place to keep them or to reduce yeah. their harm than this this book of lies and i yeah. want us to work towards something like that yeah, what's up John well a, a big problem there is the the idea of salvation and heaven and mm. forgiveness and a second life so it reduces the importance of what you do in this life yeah yeah. So you can get away with murder, to coin a phrase, and just go and, and say, you know, I'm sorry, and you will go to heaven. That's, mm. that's a very bad idea. Very good. Very, very good points for, for a very bad idea. We yeah. need to work and, harder for that. And you turn it around and you say that, you know, well, if Christianity is keeping you from doing harm and doing bad things, why didn't it stop Hitler? You know, mm. he, he's a Catholic. Yeah, he speaking of letting believer, things happen, right? And the and the church was behind him, you know, during all that time. Why well, why did he do good? Why didn't he do good instead of harm? And you don't have yeah. to reach as far back as Hitler. You can look at Russia and Ukraine. You can look at right. you know just the exactly. Trump legacy. Yeah. Like yeah. there's mm -hmm. just so many examples of harm yeah. going unobtained or uninhibited. Yeah. And if yeah. we can't believe in a virtuous God, if we allow and, that to happen and, with them being all powerful, right. and yeah. even even done by the church it's itself, mm -hmm. like in the Inquisitions, in the name of God, yeah. they right. were doing all this harm. And the distinction here is we're talking about needless harm, harm that comes without any need yeah. for it. Why do we have that? We should be able to go without that by definition. Right. Why do we allow it to happen? Why does God allow it to happen? If we, if there is no God, let's work on our own ends to stop that from happening because we will work in a universe where there isn't necessarily purpose given to us. We can come up with a purpose to oh. enhance our well-being. But lacking that, if there is a God that's controlling everything, that God is not all-powerful. That God is not all-knowing. That God is not all-virtuous. John Richards, what's coming up next week? Oh, next week we have the return of Pastor Alan Cartwright on Free Thought Hour. He came on about a month ago, and he reckons that we were too kind, too too gentle to him. Okay. He wants to come back and have a more abrasive encounter. So he's preparing a PowerPoint presentation. Oh no! Come. Yeah, he's going to tell us why Jesus is God and He's right and we're wrong. Mm. And Tercia, my co-host, and I are going to say things that challenge that. It yeah. Should be fun. It's actually kind of embarrassing. Like it's been a while since I've dealt with Christianity at that degree. And now when I see someone who is a Christian, that's just like to the point where they're willing to put up a PowerPoint presentation to like oh. extol how much they believe in this thing. It's just like, you know, I like sci-fi too. <laughs> 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 but you'll never see me being like quantum leap and why it actually could actually happen yes. slide number one yes. so <laughs> Webster's dictionary defines web quantum leap says it's like okay calm down guy all right uh you can find me on let's chat i'm here feel free to leave a comment we'll go over them over next week's show larry i'm still you know you you brought up a lot of points but i still don't understand what atheism is and what it's all about we're just gonna have to call it you know, let's just, let's all become Christians. There's no way yeah, we can resolve no, this. No, no, no. I've actually put those ideas in the book called Atheism, What's It All About? It's available on Amazon. My content, including a lot of the articles in the book, are at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button. Uh, there you'll find our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. My YouTube channel can be found by searching for Doubter5. If you have any questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com, and we'll answer them on future shows. 
If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, you can get help from uh, Recovering from Religion at recoveringfromreligion.org. And you can find this show on podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.